experienced in Lagos overnight uh, by speaking with the Lagos State Commissioner for Transport, Dr. Frederick Oladende. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC News this hour. Uh, Nigerians actually went through hellish experience yesterday as a result of the traffic, uh, the gridlock experience, I mean, experienced from Lagos to Ibadan within that axis. Talk to us about how this was so. Okay, um, thank you and uh, good afternoon. Um, first of all, let me apologize to all negotiators and uh, everybody that uh, went through that uh, hellish experience yesterday. Um, as we speak, uh, we are in conversation with uh, the federal controller, uh, that's the federal ministry of uh, works and housing. And uh, we are also in um, dialogue with uh, uh, Julius Berger, and uh, as we speak, they have stopped work so that we can review their traffic management plan. So, as you know, that um, the construction has started um, some time ago, and uh, as they begin to approach Lagos, um, it gets more difficult. So, as we speak, they are around the Kara Long Ridge uh, Opix area, and because it's the main road that takes you out of Lagos to Ogun State as well as uh, Oyo State, um, there's no alternative route. And what we're doing is we take them in sections. So they walk on maybe two lanes, three lanes, or a particular section, and then open up another section for motorists. And so they take them in bite size, and then as soon as they finish, they open, that, uh, they open up that route for other people to use. But yesterday, there's a particular uh, section in Opix where people, I mean, people are notorious for taking one ways, et cetera. So we needed to block that U-turn. And what happened was that there is a community called Wadawa, where people come out of, and then people that want to do a U-turn. So these people wanted to do a U-turn, and they were asked to go further to do that U-turn, but they refused. And then there were other people that were driving against traffic. So um, a combination of this is what caused the total gridlock at that section. Um, we had the people from FRSC as well as Trace managing the situation, and I think they deployed uh, the mobile, uh, the mobile police. But one thing I want to say is that when we have construction like that, uh, especially where you don't have an alternative, people should exercise caution. People should be patient. Around the construction area, we advise that people should do about 30 kilometers per hour. But a lot of people want to speed. And then when they see a bit of rain or maybe a bit of traffic, people begin to lose it and then, you know, they want to take one way. So it was a combination of bad, uh, uh, bad behavior as well as uh, a reduction in the capacity that caused the mayhem yesterday. Right. Do Dr. Lido, in the, apart from uh, some of the people who are exhibiting bad behavior, as you've actually, uh, you know, stated, um, we understand that the construction or the reconstruction of the road would last for three months. And we got information that... A section of the road was blocked and nothing was being done on that road. It was just blocked for the sake of being blocked. Help us understand why this was so and how the construction company is expediting action to ensure that that place is delivered in you know, the appointed term. Um, I think I need to correct that. So no, no construction company will block a road and not leave an alternative for motorists. That's not correct. Um, it's possible that they laid asphalt on that road and then they needed to uh, get it to dry up. But at any point in time, there is always a section of the road that is open. And then my point is people need to exercise patience and caution. And that's why we have people deployed at that section to ensure that uh, there's free flow of traffic. From the Lagos end, we have LASMA all the way to the border. We have Trace, we have L um, FRSC, and then we have the police walking all collaboratively, just to make sure that there's seamless traffic. There's, I mean, at no point would you have a road blocked totally. It's not possible because we're monitoring and we're ensuring that um, the construction company does the right thing. Apart from appealing to Nigerians to be very patient you know, on these roads, what, what, what else would you like to you know, say to those who are watching now as regards, because when it comes to Monday, a lot of people will be going out today. People are expected to be out for different festivities and all that. How, would you, uh, how long would it take, really? So this construction is till the end of December. As I've said, um, Julius Berger has stopped work. We are having a meeting with them this afternoon. and We're reviewing the traffic management plan, and we're going to ensure that there's free flow of traffic. 
Right. The only thing I want to say is that the commuters should please exercise patience. It's a construction zone. It's to free. I mean, we want um, traffic to continue to flow. People will slow down, but the, I mean, the traffic will continue to, to move. So let us exercise patience. We will do everything possible. We have trace, we have LASMA, we have FRS, we have our police, we have tow trucks on the road to remove trucks that break down. So everything has been, I mean, supplied. So let's just work collaboratively and then make sure that uh, we get through this painful period. And um, by December, I believe that Julia Verde should be out of that road. Right, Lagos State Commissioner for Transport, Dr. Frederick Oladende, thank you so much for that update. Thank you.